Hello, 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 everyone. My name is Renetta Gunn Stevens. I am the CEO of Sophisticated Press. Welcome, welcome, welcome to 30 Days Live with Sophisticated Press. A little bio about myself as you're coming in. Um, I am the published author of three books, Kingdom Speaking in the Boardroom, A Dad's Redemption, and as well as 10 Ways to Eliminate Debt by Writing. I'm also a ghostwriter. Can't give you the titles of the books that's out in the marketplace due to non-disclosure agreements, but um, we have books out in the marketplace for ghostwriting. And um, of course, I'm the CEO of Sophisticated Press, which was created to help you tell your story. And not only just tell your story for the purpose of telling your story, but to tell your story for the purpose of helping someone else understand that they too can make it and that they're not alone in what they're going through. So as you come in, do me a favor. Tell me the state you're calling from. Um, you know, I say that every time. I don't know why I say call in. I'm a, I must gonna have a radio show or something where people gonna call in. Cause lately I say that every one, calling in. Tell me the state that you're you're um, checking in from. Um, do us a favor, follow us on all of our social media platforms. On Twitter, we are Sophie Press, S-O-P-H-I. P-R-E-S-S. -S. On Instagram, we are Sophisticated Press. We have a YouTube channel. And I would love for you to follow us on YouTube and look at some of the past videos. If you haven't seen the first six videos of the lives, boy, are you missing out. Go back to YouTube, subscribe, and watch the first six videos as well. And get some of this knowledge, right? Because, you know, we're here to help you. We're here to build a relationship with you. So that, that way you know a publisher. Add us to your network. You know, that's really dope if you got a publisher that you can just call and be like, oh, let me call my publisher friend, right? That sounds really cool, right? I think it do. Um, so yeah, let us be a part of your network. We'll be happy to do that. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about how to sell without selling. Now this today is actually every Monday for the month of October is going to be our push series. So this was the first Monday in October, right? Because October 1st was on a Tuesday. So sophisticated press has a book and it's called push. Promote until shipping and handling occurs, right? So you know those um, posts, those posts that you'll see where people have all of their orders in the background with the U.S. Um, boxes or the envelopes, and they'd be like, "Yeah, thank you all for your support. We want you to have those social media contents too, right?" So when you pre-order push, you're going to get the first two chapters free that you can download and begin incorporating. So I want you to do that. I just want to fix this a little bit because it just feel like it's so like cloudy. Like like I'm in a Dreams Girl movie or something. It just makes me want to be like, we are dream girls. Oh, like, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm looking and it just look really cloudy to me. And I wipe my glasses, you all. So yeah, I did just bust a little tune. You know, I just like having fun and being full of life. So um, yeah, when you order Push, you're going to get the first two chapters free. Listen, we made it affordable for you. It's only $15.99. That is the pre-order um, price. Once pre-order is over in 30 days, then the price is going to go up. So make sure you get your push while it is at the $15.99 price. So today, we're going to be talking about selling. I'm going to get a little serious because now it's like I really want you to get selling. Um, the reason why it's important for you to get selling is a lot of you all have some good manuscripts out in the marketplace. You have some good manuscripts out in the marketplace, but you're not marketing, right? And then when you are marketing and pushing, right? When you finally get the connection with the client, you're not a good salesperson. You don't really know how to close the deal. And so today we're going to be talking about selling without selling. I would encourage you to get your pen and your paper out because I'm about to share a lot of wisdom with you. In fact, every time you come to a sophisticated press, 
um, live video, get a pen and paper out because truly everything that we give to you is something that God has told us that you need because he is the CEO of our company. And so he is kind of the orchestrator of this whole thing that lets us know what it is he wants us to talk about for 30 days. We actually have our full 30 day schedule already written out. So nothing I say to you is by coincidence. This has all been prayed over and ordained by God. All right, let's get into it. So, um, a lot of people have had bad experiences with salesmen or women, and and sometimes salespeople get the the bad rep of being like a con artist or someone you know who doesn't have integrity. But that's not the case. As we know as anything in life, there is always somebody who mess it up for everybody. And then everybody think that whole population is, is bad, right? But we also know that generalization of a whole population is bad as well. Because you have to choose a, and treat everyone based on the individual contact that you have with them and experience that you have with them and not the generalization that sometimes the public will put on people or sometimes you put on people just because you really um don't understand their position and their agenda and their job description so if you're going to be an author you have to be a salesperson why why do you have to be a salesperson you have to be a salesperson because you have a book that you need to get into your reader's hand. In order for that to happen, there's need to be some selling. And so this is why this subject is going to be important for you, the author, because if you have a book and in that book is some resolution, in that book is some creativity, in that book is some expertise, you have to figure out a way to get that into your reader's hand. And one of the ways that you're going to get that into your reader's hand is by selling to them. So this is not in no, any particular order, but I do have a list of things that I want to make sure that I cover. So you will see me looking down at my list on how to sell without selling. Hey, Lourdes. Um, and so we're going to begin to talk about selling without selling. The good thing about push is you can use push, even though it's for authors, if you are an entrepreneur, you can use it for any product or service, okay? So the first um, foundation of selling is building a relationship. Now, some relationships takes time. Some relationship, when you're a salesperson, you don't have that much time, right? You have like a short window of opportunity to build a relationship. And so when you are selling, the main goal is to build a relationship. And as a good salesperson, you're going to gauge how much time you have. Thank you so much, Lord, is saying that my hair is beautiful. I'm doing very well and I'm, and I'm excited to teach selling today. Um, let us know what state you're calling from. And if you have any products or services, let us know as well, okay? So that way we can maybe use some of your products or services and the examples that we're going to use. As you come in, everyone, say something so that way I know that you're here, okay? So the first foundation of selling is building a relationship. How do you build a relationship? All right, Virginia, Chesapeake, whoop, whoop. Um, you build a relationship by... In, in marketing, in a marketplace, by providing valid research and resources and content, right? When you constantly provide content or information to your client, to your reader, um, they begin to build trust in you. Because how many of you know the a, a good characteristic of a relationship is trust? They begin to build re trust in you because of the relationship, because of the resources, because of the content that you're giving them. If you don't build trust, they're not going to want to purchase anything from you, right? Because remember, as an author, you're going to be doing pre-order. So that's basically them giving you money before they have a product. That takes trust, right? So how do you, how do you begin to build that trust? You begin to build that trust by being on social media, showing them consistency, 
providing them if you if you are selling trying to sell a product or service or you know two months from now you're coming out with a product or service you should be on social media building a relationship do not wait until your product or service or your book is published to begin promoting it if you do that your book may not be successful and then you're going to think that you're a failure and you're not a failure you're just a bad promoter you're just a bad marketer. You're a bad salesperson. So that's why we're here today to teach you how to sell without selling. Selling, some, in fact, the first rule when you are selling is not to sell. It's not to sell. It's really to serve, right? And you serve by providing content and resources and resolution. Now, um, with any relationship, you need to put in time and communication, right? You need time and communication. And so how are you going to deliver that time and communication? Lord, is tell me to um, if you're in, in any businesses or, or um, products, okay? So how do you put in time and communication? So there's a few ways that you put in time and communication. You put in time and communications through emails. You put in time and communication through phone calls. And now the new trend is you put time and communication in through direct messaging, a.k.a. the DM, okay, a.k.a. Facebook Messenger. So those are ways that you will be able to communicate with your clients, communicate with your readers. Um, you know, in sales, they say a person has to see your product or service or your book seven times before they really pay attention to it. Because there are so many different marketing coming to them day by day, hour by hour. It takes a good seven times for them to see it and, and really like notice it, right? And then with books alone, it takes six seconds for them to decide if they want to read the book. Um, and that's because they're going to look at the cover. They're going to read the title. They're going to turn it over and look at the sales copy. And if, if none of that has caught their eye within six, seven, six seconds, they're going to put your book back on the shelf. And they're going to look for another book spine that stands out and that catches their attention. Okay? So you want to make sure that in your relationship building process, it's not even about you getting a sale. Notice I said emails. It's about you getting their email. It's about you providing valid content. And resources it is about you building a relationship so there can be trust okay hey Trenisha we're talking about a good topic today we're talking about selling without selling okay um, and the first rule of thumb is to build a relationship and you build a relationship by providing content and resources and you don't even ask for the sale you just you just start throwing out wisdom giving out knowledge right so after you have built that relationship you need a meeting place please 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 do not allow facebook and instagram to be your only meeting place for your for your readers every author needs a author landing page aka a website okay now, websites may run from $250 to $1,000 on up, but try to get it on the low end because with the author landing page, unless you have a lot of products and services, you just need like a three-page website where you can meet your readers and have an intimate setting with them outside of social media platforms. I guarantee you, I guarantee you because it's, it's the truth for me too, I'm sorry, y'all didn't know I was bending down and little look cleavage was showing. Um, I guarantee you that you probably got more followers than you do emails. So the goal for this week is to try to get everybody who is following you on social media is to come up with a way to ask them for their email. Why? Because as an author, you need to have their emails, not just their follow on social media. You need to have their email and you need to also be able to direct them to your website if Facebook ever drop, break down, if Instagram ever break down, okay? So the second thing that I want you to understand about sales is 
you have to leave your feelings at the door and your insecurities. Sales is not about feelings. Sales is not about insecurity at all. Take the feelings out of sales. Take your insecurities out of sales. You must have patience and you must have discipline. When it comes to sales, please take your feelings out of sales. And I hope you have a pen and paper and are writing this down, you all, because this is how I have become successful at selling, okay? Selling to individuals takes time. Sometimes when we sell, we are selling a product, we want to just ask them for the sale. And then when they tell us no, we like, okay, and that's it. Or we get mad and be like, no, they didn't buy my book. Oh, I can't believe they didn't buy my book. Now the feelings coming in, right? So now you got your impatience and your feelings coming in like, I don't believe this. It's pre-order season and ain't nobody bought my book. I'm going to fix them. That's okay. Christmas coming up. No, we don't want you to be like that. We want you to have patience and we want you to take your feelings out of this. Sales is a, people say it's a numbers game, but to me it's a relationship game, right? Like it's, it's, it's cause, cause sometimes numbers is not even really a factor, right? Sometimes numbers is not even a factor. Okay, to Trinisha, definitely. I'm driving, but going to rewatch and take notes when I settle down. Absolutely. Um, so when you are selling and you're building a relationship, we want you to be patient with your readers and we want you to not feel insecure about, um, you know, providing them research, providing them content. Because sometimes, you know, um, and I had to learn this, you'll be like, well, if I give them all this, what is going to be left for them to purchase from me? If I give them all this information, but, but. Those sales has changed now where now it's not about you getting the sale and about what, what your reader can do for you. Now it's about what you can do for your reader because there are so many options out there. They're going to go with who is serving them the best. So now the name of the game is let me give you a sample of what you're going to be getting when you do business with me. I.e. that's why I go live right because i want to give people a sample of the relationship they're entering i want them to see the person that they're going to be doing business with i want them to see my humor i want them to see how um open and accessible i am i want them to see how human i am um that way if you know most people here publisher and they think like oh my goodness i have to be so serious and then I get on here and, and get to talking about myself and being fun the way I am. And they be like, oh, okay, I like her. She's really cool. I can see myself working with her. She makes me feel comfortable. Why? Because I'm, I'm making sure that they feel comfortable and that I'm building a relationship. For instance, with Trenisha. Um, I've never met Trenisha in person but I feel like I know her. Why? Because we meet on social media all the time. We support each other all the time. And even though we haven't physically met, there is a relationship that is beginning to build. And so this is this important cycle of selling where it's not even about what can you buy from me today? It's about how can I help you? How can I help you? How can I help you? What is it that you need that I can help you with? And maybe you have something you can help me with, all right? So I want you to get have patience when it comes to sales, and I want you to take your feelings out of sales. If people do not purchase from you, please do not get mad and throw them away because they said no the first time. Please do not get offended because they said no the first time, okay? Take your feelings and your insecurities out of sales. Also, when you begin to get sales, so here's another thing that we want you to take your um, feelings out of because sometimes when we do get sales, now we be like, I feel like I deserve a new car because I just made $3,000 this week. So let me go buy a new car because I feel like I earned it. Again, take your feelings out of it. You don't want to begin overspending just because you begin to use these strategies that I'm giving you and you see results. You want to still keep your money 
and keep investing in your product and service and don't and take your feelings out of it. Do not overspend because you never know the more exposure you get when an opportunity comes for you to join and you just bought that car for $3,000 because you felt like you earned it with that sale and now the opportunity here and it takes $3,000 to get in and you don't have the opportunity to get into the sale because you let your feelings send you to the new to, to the car lot, right? Um, and, and let me tell you all the, a, a secret about me because you know I always tell y'all my secrets because y'all my pushers. Um, I don't drive a fancy car. I don't. I don't drive a fancy car because I like having titles, right? So I would prefer to have the title to my car versus paying $600 a month on a car note. Like if, if, if I can't pay cash for it, I don't want it. I, I just really don't want it because I've seen the benefit of having peace every month, of not having as, all those bills, so don't 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 feel the pressure either of trying to keep up with the Joneses because I ain't gonna even lie. Sometimes I be like, oh, I should just go buy me a new car. But then I have to remember, like, no, because I like having money during the month and it's not going to towards a car that's gonna get me to the same place as the other car is gonna get me. And so, you know, sometimes we'll feel pressure to get a car just so people won't think we're broke. But I know that I'm not broke. So I don't fall into that pressure of let me go buy a car. Now I'm going to get a new car eventually, but it won't be because of peer pressure or my feelings. You know, it'll be after I have saved enough money to make sure that it makes sense and I can pay cash and I don't have no car note. So I just want to share that with you all. So if your car is not a Land Rover or if your car is not a 2020, you don't feel bad because there are times where I have been embarrassed because I don't drive a fancy car. Um, and it's not that it's not it's not because I can't afford it. It's because I love titles. And if I can't go to the lot and spend twenty five thousand at one time on the type of car that I want, then I'll wait till I can and then I'll get it. OK. Now, the third thing to selling without selling is um, it's a sale by having your links on all email signatures. I want you to make sure that um, you have all your links on all your signatures because one of the things is this too. The more research and content you give people and the more you come, you know, on, on Facebook Lives and you're pre presenting, sorry, all of your information, they'll begin to research you right? They'll email you or they'll go looking and seeing like, who are you? Do you, they'll Google you. And you want to make sure that you have content and products and services available for when they research you. So that's where that website come in, right? Now you haven't sold them or told them, you know, you want to sell them anything, but because you're being such a great provider of information, you're being such a great resource, then they're coming in and they're saying, let me Google this person and let me see what's to them. And when they begin to Google you, then they should see your products and services out in the marketplace. And so that is why it's important that you make sure you have a website. Again, you don't have to spend a lot of money on your website, but you want to make sure that you have um, the foundation in order because there's nothing like wanting, you know, everybody want a video to go viral, right? Because when you, your video go viral, that's over a million plus views. But what happened when your video go viral and then they want to they wanna look you up so they can support everything you do because you just wow them and blow their socks off and you don't have nothing set up for them. You don't have no website. You don't have no products that they can Google. You, you know, you, you don't, you don't have enough to keep feeding the viralness of, you know, so that's one of the things, like if you go to my YouTube channel, we have so many videos that sophisticated press. Why? Because we don't know which one that God is going to blow on. But whichever one he do blow on, when they do go to, to research sophisticated press, they're going to see all of this content like, oh, she been in the game. She been giving out knowledge. She she ain't, this ain't just a one-time video of hers. Oh, she, she for real about helping people. She always giving nuggets of wisdom. You know what I'm saying? That's what you want. You want to make sure that you're constantly providing information to the public 
So you're establishing yourself as a expert and that's a part of sales because when they're ready to purchase, guess who they're going to come looking for? Oh, that lady who's always, you know, giving us wisdom and giving us knowledge or that guy who's always, you know, got those great informational posts. Let me connect with him because now I'm ready to purchase and see how he's sold without even selling. So don't always worry about trying to get to sale on the first time or the first contact. You just want to establish yourself in a, as an expert. And in order to establish yourself in a, as an expert, you can't just say I'm an expert. No, you got to establish yourself. That means you got to have some content out here in the marketplace that's valid, that's applicable, that the people can use and they can see results and then they can come back and say, oh, she knows what she's talking about because I did what she said in her video and it worked. So yeah, I'm going to go back and listen to what she's talking about because she obviously knows what she's talking about. It worked for me as well, Okay. So the third, the third foundation and, you know, and that we're going to use for selling without selling is make sure every email signature that you have, if you have a product or service, if you email somebody, it should be a link that's already in your signature, not nothing that you have to manually enter in. It should be a link in your email signature with your products and services. Okay. And you want to make sure that this is the direct link. Let's say for instance, if you know how I have sophisticatedpress.com, but I don't want you just to, to go to sophisticatedpress.com because you may not know where to go. So I'm, I want you to go to, right now I have a book that's out for pre-order. So I'm going to have the push link there. Why? Because I'm going to direct you where I want you exactly to go. I want you to go to push. I don't want you to go to sophisticatedpress.com. Even though that page is on sophisticatedpress.com, I'm going to give you the direct link to push. So if you have a book or product or service on your website, that's the link that you want to click in a in, in link is the link to the cart to purchase that product. Okay. Um, next is find out the problem before you try to sell the solution. Find out the problem before you try to sell the solution. Can somebody tell me what is one way that you can find out the problem before you try to sell the solution? What is the way that you can find out the problem before you try to sell the solution? I know Trenisha says she's driving, so I don't want her to text and drive. But if you're watching this on a replay, when you come back, I want you to answer this question for me. What is the way you can find out the problem before you try to sell the solution? Hey, Simone. Hey, Latrice Carr. What is the way? One of my audience tell me what's the way that um, you can find the problem before you try to sell the solution. Because this is where this is why we're not selling good. Because we're trying to sell the solution before we know the problem. So what are some ways that we can find the problem? Let me know what you all do. What are some ways that you can 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 find out the solution? Find out the problem before you give the solution. Hey Simone. So Simone, if someone is, if, if you have a solution and you know, uh, research, yep, you can research. It's one more word I'm looking for. Definitely research, but research who? Research the client when you say research. We are number four on selling without selling. How to find, you got to find out the problem before you try to sell the solution. Take a poll and ask them. Absolutely. Yep. Research the market. Absolutely. So, so here's the thing. And, and I'm going to give you a, another story. because I love stories. So it says that means to be quiet and listen.
first, right? You got to be quiet. You got to listen to what the client is saying. Sometimes when we are on sales, we just want to tell them about all our products and services. And it's like we're trying to give them the solution and we haven't even took the time to find out what are you having a problem with, right? So both of you all are right, Simone and Trenisha. It's like you take a poll. You ask them, you know, like, what is it that you're having difficulty with? What is it that, um, you know, that I can assist you with? And you let them talk right? You just let them tell you everything that's going wrong with them or that's going wrong with their business. And then um, that way, you know exactly what solution. Because like with us, we have so many solutions. If I just came in and started telling everybody every service we have, they'll be like, oh, like they'll get turned off because I haven't given them a chance to tell me their problem first then I don't have to give them all 20 solutions that we offer. I can just give them the one solution that's tailor-made to their problem, right? So I want you to practice not first trying to give them the solution before you have identified the problem. Because if you're trying to sell me an umbrella and it's not raining, I'm going to have a hard time trying to buy this this umbrella right now because it's not raining. And I'm not complaining that my clothes is all wet, right? Now, there are times in sales that you can create the desire and then provide the product. But the first thing, the first, you know, part of sales is to first find out the, the, find out the problem before you give the solution, okay? Um, it says, just go online selling the resolution to people who may not have the problem. And, and that's what I was just saying earlier on part of my notes is sometimes we just want to give them the solution, give them solution, give them solution, solution, solution. And they're like, well, that's not my problem right now. So that solution is not attractive for me to buy money. Okay. Um, that's also why it's important to know your niche. Let me tell you about the niche. It is also okay to change your niche, but please, please, please do not say that your niche is everybody. Your niche is not everybody. If your niche is everybody, then you don't know your niche. And you need to go back and you need to learn your niche, right? So I changed my niche because at first my niche was everybody who loved Jesus Christ. Because, of course, we was a Christian publishing company, right? So I'm like, surely my niche is Christians. Mm, no. But I had to change my niche because that was too big of a population, right? And everybody was just falling in and, and, and everybody that loved Jesus, that wasn't working for me. So I had to change my niche. And now I know that my niche personally is professional individuals who want to publish a book to enhance their portfolio, to enhance their brand, to enhance their qualifications for a promotion. Notice how now it's more specific professional individuals because everybody who loves Jesus, that don't mean they have a job. That don't mean they have the capacity to pay for the publishing package. That doesn't mean that they're ready to invest in themselves. But when I change my niche to professional Christians or professional adults who want to, man, I want to get a promotion. Let me see ways I can enhance my 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 qualifications on my resume. Man, I got this business and you know, it's really not getting the exposure it needs. Let me see ways that I can get the exposure for my brand. Publish a book. Right? Those people, they have a job, they're used to paying for things, they're kind of up the corporate ladder, so they're professionals and and instantly my bottom line increase because I change my niche market that is very important people do not be afraid in going back to the table and changing your niche market if your niche market that you have um identified and you're not making the sales then change your niche market maybe you're maybe you're trying to service a niche market that doesn't need your product simone says exactly i like calling people from their own business modified solutions from Modified Solutions said, exactly, nor do I have a desire to work with everyone. Absolutely. When I came in the game, I'm like, oh, everybody's going to be, everybody that loves Jesus is my niche market. And that truly wasn't the case. Like, once I changed my niche market and I knew exactly who my product and services was for, my bottom line changed, okay? 
So find out the problem before you try to sell the solution. Girl. Cause some, and some people, they love Jesus Christ and they just thought it was going to favor, was going to fall on their lap. The book was going to fall on their lap like manna from the sky. And I was like, no ma'am, no sir. That, that's not how I work. Sorry. Um, the other thing is this is really good, you all. This is some homework for you all to do, okay? I want you to collab with influencers, but check this out. I'm not talking about like the influencers from that celebrities, right? Because I know some people tell you like, oh, you know, it's okay to to um do collab with influencers. And then they say, well, you can pay me $300. You can pay me $500. You can pay me $1,000. Excuse me. I never do that. Not saying there's nothing wrong with it, but I, that whole thousand dollars that I'm paying you right now, I can I can do something better with that, right? Now I'm not saying I won't ever do that, but I've never done that thus far, because I believe that there are local influencers that you can connect with, and sometimes we're always looking for that celebrity influencer that's going to charge you a thousand to ten thousand dollars when you probably have some influencers in your facebook and your instagram following that you can connect with so how that looks is do you really know who are following you in your in your social media have you ever dissected your followers and said okay this how many magazine people i have in my my following this how many radio and tv people i have in my following some people, they're just a regular person, but they know everybody, right? That may be somebody that even though they're not considered a celebrity, that doesn't mean there's not a, they're not an influencer. I know a lot of people that just right off the back, and if you really think about it, that it seems like they just know everybody, right? That is a good person that you can approach them and say, hey, I got a book. Hey, I got a product. Wanted to know if I can work with you and you kind of cross promote my book and if you're working on anything i can help you out and we can help each other out right so i want you to collab with influencers but before you go the high celebrity trying to get you know whoever on there start local there are some people that's following you right now that know everybody and they will be a good fit for you right so um also just dissect your social media following and really find out if you have over, even if you like me, we don't have a lot of followers. We have like maybe 300 followers, if that. Um, I want you to find out who those three followers is. Because even through our followers, we we found out we have some some bloggers. We found out that we have some um, a lot of radio people. So I want you to really dissect and just go through everybody that's following you and see if they're a part of a business. And if they're a part of a business... Find out is there a way you can cross promote, okay? Now, here's what was really, really, really mind-boggling to me. I'm going to give you some sales st statistics. Sales statistics. 40% of salespeople never follow up. Remember how we talked about that last week, the importance of following up? 40% of salespeople never follow up. The, and remember how today we talked about in sales? Um, let's see what Simone said. Simone said, when you first mentioned influencer, I rolled my eyes. Uh-huh. LOL. I'm exhausted with all of them, but a local influencer makes a lot of sense. It does, right? Yeah, because it's like, I don't have time to pay anybody no $500 just because you're an influencer. Like... You may be an influencer, but what if you're not an influencer of my niche market? That's, again, all about knowing your niche market. Just because you're an influencer or a celebrity, that doesn't mean that my niche market, you may not even be tempting to my niche market. So everything has to go back to your niche market and seeing, like, does this person even work with my brand? So, yes, I would say go local first. Definitely go local first. But 40% of salespeople never follow up. That's one attempt and quit. So remember when we talked about today, leaving your feelings and your insecurities out the game. Sometimes, you know, that one time they say no, we're human. Sometimes we may get offended. Like, no, they didn't say no. 
I can't believe they didn't buy my, my book. I can't believe they didn't do this. I can't believe they didn't do that. And so we never approach them again. Why? Because we're letting our feelings get in the way of selling. When you're selling, like literally, literally guys and girls, because I hate calling women guys because you all are so beautiful. Um, literally women, when, when you're selling, you can't be like worrying about looking desperate, worrying about being embarrassed, worrying about coming across as thirsty. We're selling. So you said no today. Guess what? In two more days, I'm going to ask you again. Why? Because I'm selling a product. And so this study showed that 40% of salespeople never follow up. They just do one time and they quit if they don't get to sell. It says 25% of salespeople make a second contact and quit. So now you got people after the second contact and they get to know they quit again. And then it said only 10% of salespeople make three attempts. Only 10% of salespeople make three attempts. So again, if you're not building the relationships, if you're not, um, you know, establishing yourself as a expert, how dare you on the first time just want people to trust you and just give you money? And even if you are doing that, and they, if they don't do it, my rule of thumb is you got to say, give me a hard no. Until you give me a hard no, do not contact me no more. I'm going to continue to pop up in your email. I'm going to continue to pop up in your um, DM. I'm going to continue to give posts. Why? Because I understand in sales, until you give me a hard no, it's really a not yet. It's really today. It's not a good day, but keep trying. So I never take it offensive of, of personally when someone doesn't purchase something and I send them a marketing in their DM. It's just because, hey, until you tell me don't send me this again, in another few days, I'm going to send it to you again. Why? Because only 10% of salespeople make three attempts. And I want you to be a part of that 10%. Do not stop selling until you get to sell. That is why this book is so important. Do not stop pushing until you get the box order, until you get the email. You're going to promote until shipping and handling occurs. You're going to promote until you get the sale. Now, here's some more statistics. 2% of the sales are made on a first attempt. So you got to be one of the goodest sales reps because only 2% of sales happen on the first attempt. So when you don't get that sale on the first attempt, don't feel like that you're a loser. Don't feel like you're doing it wrong. No, statistics show that only 2% of sales happen on the first attempt. Only 3% of sales happen on the second attempt. Only 3% happens on the second attempt. 5% of sales happen on the third attempt. See how much time and effort you got to put in? Because already only 5% of sales happen on the third attempt. 10% of sales happens on the fourth attempt. So now you've contacted this person four times. And if they still ain't said, look, lady, don't contact me no more, they, they, they must be interested, right? So we're going to keep contacting them until they say, hey, you harassing me. Stop, stop emailing me. Stop DMing me. Then I'll say, okay, I'm sorry. Thank you so much. In the future, if you ever need our services, we're always here, okay? I still don't get offended because maybe right now it's just not a good season for them. I take my feelings and my insecurities out of the sales process. Now, this is where the sales happen. 80% of sales happens in the fifth to twelfth attempt. In the fifth to twelfth attempt. So that is giving you a, a, a range of how many times you should be a, a, attempting to sell to one client. You could even have a spreadsheet and really mark off if you really want to get detail. But the good thing about when you do it through DMs, it shows you like every time you've sent them something. Um, yeah, 80% happens in 5 to 12 attempts. Simone from Modified Solutions, Solutions says, yeah, I could be more aggressive when following on my sales. Absolutely. And it's not just you. It's women in general, right? That's why a lot of salesmen are men. 
because um for some reason women feel bad when they're being aggressive and when they're constantly like following up our emotions to tell us like dang you're gonna get on their nerves or dang you irritating them or man you just you know doing too much but a male because they're more competitive so so people say they're thinking of the sale so they don't have those feelings that's stopping them from being aggressive and i think that is why um we've been able to see the results is because each each one of you know i popped up in your dm with a sale a, a, a marketing right and it's just be like okay i know simone but i'm still gonna send her this even if she don't buy it i don't I don't want, you know, her to feel pressure, but because I'm in this, this behavior of putting it in the DMs, when I send it out, I send it out to everybody. And it, and it still be times that I be like, man, I shouldn't send it to this person. And I shouldn't do that because it's just like, take your feelings out of it and just send the marketing. You never know who God is going to blow on and tell them to purchase it that day. Right? Simone said, OMG, yes, that's exactly what I think. Yeah, I mean, as women, we feel that way. We'd be like, I don't want to just keep asking them. Well, we're salespeople, and that's how we're going to make money. We got to keep asking. We got to keep showing them the benefit of our product and how it's going to solve their problem, right? So now when I reach a um, professional person, I don't just say, you need to publish a book. <clears throat> I need, You know, I need to say, hey, I come in them and say, hey, you know, um, I see your brand is doing good. I, you want to know how to make it better? You know, you want to know how to make it get more exposure, more global access? Now I'm I'm giving them the features of it, right? So just a real quick preview of what we covered today. And please, you know, take some notes and go back and look at it over and over. The first rule of selling without selling is building a relationship. You build that relationship through content through providing resources, you build that relationship through time and communication, through emails, phone calls, and DMs. In fact, if somebody email you with me, I prefer they call me because I know the type of person I am. I'm a good writer, but I'm also a good person, uh, interpersonal skills, my personal skills. So I prefer for my clients to call me first in order for me to close the sale because I make it personable. And sometimes when people are reading, they could be doing something else and then still read and they forget a word. So you have to find out if email, phone calls, or DMs, which one works best for you. But for me personally, if someone email me and they're asking for pricing, I don't just give them that price. Because if you really wanted pricing, you can go to my website and see pricing. So obviously, I see that you didn't do that. So now I want you to call me so I can talk to you. I can hear what your problem is and I can see how I can uh, assist you with what solution we offer, right? So that's just me. Um, the second thing is to leave your feelings and insecurities at the door. The, the third one was sell by having your links on all email signatures. The fourth is find out the problem before trying to sell the solution. That means that you have to let them listen. The fifth is collaborate with influencers, not always celebrities. Try local influencers, local restaurants, local cafes. Um, you know, I cannot stress enough how certain people um, go by the numbers. And even like Amazon had an influence program and I applied and they told me I wasn't an influencer because I didn't have over so many likes or I didn't have over so many um followers and i was like i'm glad y'all told me that right because i know it's a lot from the pit of hell and like even i was just telling my sister today how we don't have a lot of a lot of people on our lives but because we're obedient to god and we come on every day every day we make a lot of money why because sometimes it's not numbers don't lie so when they say numbers don't lie it depends on the type of number right um because I would prefer to have, like now it shows one person on the live. No problem. I would prefer to have one person on the line, but I can promise you today, I have made over $500 today. Right? So, those are when I say like with the numbers, you have to determine what number you want. Do you want the numbers that's going to show 
a hundred people, a thousand people on your live, but you haven't made any money today? Or do you want to just, okay, it's not that many people on your live, but you're being consistent. So people are still spending money with you on a daily basis. Okay. And then, um, lastly, it's just that 80% of the sales is going to come through the fifth or 12th, 12th attempt. So if they don't tell you no and stop harassing them, I need you to go back through all of your prospects and I need you to start back saying, hey, just catching up, trying to see where you are. This is what, you know, let's, let's schedule a five minute phone call, get on the phone with them and talk to them and make it personal so they want to spend money with you and they want to buy your, your product and service because I always give the example of what if you're good and the person that they're talking to offer the same product and it's good, who do they choose? They're going to choose the one who's most memorable. And the one who's most memorable is the one who called them, cracked a joke, gave a compliment, agreed with something, that's the person who they're going to go with when it's two people who have the same two people who have the same qualifications who are they going to go with the one who they remember the most the one that they remember the most so you want to always be memorable to your clients so they can want to spend money with you okay so that's all I have you all for today. This is our seven day on 30 days live with Sophisticated Press. Thank you so much for tuning in and engaging. Please make sure to share with your friends um, and visit us again tomorrow at six o'clock. Hey, Sonya B Fitness, we're just ending here. Um, definitely catch the replay and share with your friends. You know how we end it here at Sophisticated Press. Listen, you all, we love you so much with the love of Jesus Christ. We are so proud of you and we know you can do it and we shall catch you tomorrow, okay? Have a good day.